So this blast pot here is a 6.5 cubic foot pot. This is what we call a micro combo valve system. So the combo valve is at the top here and you can see you've got two lines running into it. Those two lines are the dead man lines. So they're called twin lines. You have one which is quarter inch, one which is eighth. So it's always the bigger or the red one that's the signal. That's the signal line. So that's the one that's got positive air all the time. That's the one that tells the rest of it what to do. You've got a piece of plumbing hanging out the side of it here, a hose coming down through this combo valve. So what that piece of hose does, it actually press helps pressurise or does pressurise the pot. So the combo valve has a piston and a chisel in it. So what happens is when you operate or open the dead man, the positive air is, uh, utilises a signal to send the piston back and pinch this hose. When it pinches the hose, this here is now pressurised, it pressurises the pot. So only when you open the dead man, which is by depressing this particular nozzle, this particular handle, when you push the safety pin in and push that handle, that means that this receives a signal. So the positive air comes down through the red line to this red line here, comes back the green line, and the green line now pushes that piston across and the wedge pinches the hose closes the hose off, pressurises the pot, and the grit will start falling through with the main air line, which is the pusher line, down through to the micro valve, and the grit and the air will now travel through and come out the end. So when I release that dead man, that means that the signal no longer is returning, and the wedge comes back off the blast, uh, the, the pressure hose or pinch hose, and the ex pot exhaust out through the bottom of the hose. So this is what we call an exhausting pot. So it's not a pressurised pot, only when I pull the dead man open does it pressurise the pot and enable blasting to occur. So with this hose here, this is what we call a sacrificial hose. So consequently after a period of time of the wedge coming across and pinching onto this hose, it has to be checked. Now that hose it's mandatory that that hose is checked for integrity each week. So after 40 hours of blasting, check that hose. The integral wall of the hose should be checked to ensure that the wedge has not undermined the integrity of the hose and it's starting to leak air. Because if you leak air there, that means that you're not pressurising the pot appropriately. So there's the, the hose that enables the pot to pressurise. This is the combo valve that enables all that to happen, to pressurise the pot. So this is positive air here. So look at this. You've got a two inch mince up coupling, a ball valve, and then you've got what we call a, a small moisture se separator. And then you've got the positive air that comes down to another valve, which what is called or known as a choke valve. I'll, des I'll describe to you later on what that does. But the air comes down through the pusher line, so that valve needs to be open to appropriate blasting. On the bottom of this moisture separator bowl, it has a sign here or a notation, drain tank daily. Well, basically what I'm telling you is that that's a little quarter inch tap and you will have that tap slightly cracked all day. So what I don't want you to do is leave it off and there's no moisture escaping during the course of the day because whilst it comes into this particular bowl, it still has to dispense with any ex excessive moisture so basically what you'll do is you'll crack that valve on the bottom, the little quarter inch tap. You'll have that cracked open during operation and it's just weeping off a small amount of air, a small amount of air, and that'll enable it to dispense with any excessive moisture that may occur during the operation of the pot. So as we look here, we've got another valve on the top here. This is called a pressure relief valve. So the whole idea of this valve here is to make sure that this pot coincides with safety regulations. So say for example, I put a 600 CFM compressor on, the, compressor on this particular blast pot, no problems with that at all. But if the pressure rating on the compressor doesn't comply with the pressure rating for this particular valve, this valve will release. Because that means there's excessive air pressure over and above what the identification 
table says here in relation to pressure rating for this particular pot. So there's your identification manufacturer's label or certified label that gives you an indication of what its maximum pressure is, what its operating pressure is, and this pressure relief valve is relative to that information. So the two must coincide. This particular valve here needs to be checked as well. Primarily you've got to remember that this is a blast pot with aggregate in it. That is a piece of brass. The brass has a seat. The seat is what we call a tapered seat. So if there's grit that enters into that shaft, it does undermine its ability to be able to seat. So what are the consequences of it if it doesn't seat? All it does is it blows air. Can't hurt me. There's no problems with that at all. But what I do need to do is check to make sure that that is in good repair. And I would put that on uh, a three monthly check so that all you do need to do is remove it without air on this and this valve turned off. You would remove that and check to see if the seat is, is still conical and still tapered and clean is the most important thing we're looking for, the cleanliness. So when I mentioned previously about the water in the air, you've got to understand that if there is excessive moisture in the air that's feeding this pot, it does undermine the operational aspects of all this particular equipment in relation to the parent metals of the piston, the parent metal of the shaft, the seat on the other end of it, and things like brass, where brass um, will cope with moisture, there is also the calcium buildup from the moisture that does get into the seat and undermine its ability to be able to seat properly. So if it's not seating properly, of course, it'll just be exhausting air. Now, with your pressure gauge that I showed you before, you can check the pressure that's coming into the pot to make sure that it's not exceeding that if you can't identify it appropriately on the compressor. So all these checks we put in place to make sure that we are safe throughout the entire procedure of blasting. So remember to check this periodically. Make sure this is clean and remove it periodically without any air over this particular pressure vessel. This valve here enables me to stop the flow of air into this moisture separator before it goes into the combo valve. So this valve will deem this pot inoperable primarily because it hasn't have the capacity to fill with air and fill the pot up, uh, which could um, result in, in uh, injury to me if I start unscrewing anything like this. You've got to remember too that when something's under pressure, it's very difficult to undo. So if it's under pressure, you think to yourself, well, hang on, that shouldn't be as tight as that. Well, have I done the checks before I go any further? Is there air on? No, the valve's off. Is this drain open? Oh, there's no air leaking out of it. Okay, I'm safe. It also is important to isolate the source of the air, which is the compressor. Isolate it. Let people know that I am actually doing something to the pot. There's nothing wrong also with leaving the whip check on the bull hose and just disconnecting the bull hose just to make sure that I'm safe. This can't be filled with air. So when the air comes into this pot, what it does at the top of the pot, there's a round piston we call a pop-up valve. What happens is the air comes in through this piping here, through a standpipe and into the pot. The air escapes out the pop, top of that pipe to pressurise this pot. So the grid inside the pot is not pressurised down the bottom. The conical section of the pot falls of its own volition, so gravity allow, allows the grit to fall. What does happen in the top of the pot here, the air evenly suppresses the grit and pushes it down. So the air itself is fed from the standpipe that comes from this particular plumbing that goes into the pot. So the pop-up valve, on this particular micro combo valve, the pop-up valve only comes up when you open the dead man. So when I depress this trigger here, so push the safety pin in, depress this trigger, the air travels in here, up through the standpipe, pushes the pop-up valve up, pressurises the pot, and the pot is held with pressure until I release the dead man. Then it exhausts out this side again. So that valve comes back and the air is enabled to pass out through this hose. The one thing to remember if you have a pot tender, somebody that looks after the blast pot while we're blasting, particularly with young guys that are unfamiliar with this equipment, spend the time to go through the operational procedure with this particular equipment because what can happen is when the young guys are filling the pot, they tend to push the grit down 
in the concave of the pot lid itself. Now if you haven't got a screen on this or a lid, they tend to push the grit in and they'll put their fingers in where the pop-up valve is. Now if you do that, if you put your finger in there and someone does happen to depress the pin and open the dead man, this will pressurise the pot, that pop-up valve comes up and that kid's got his fingers stuck in there, it'll chop them off. So the important thing to remember is, how do I eliminate that from happening? If somebody is operating this, or if somebody does inadvertently open that dead man, use the lid and screen. So take the lid off, and the screen here will enable the pot to be filled without the young guys putting their fingers in there, and also too, it eliminates uh, debris that you don't wish to be in there, like pieces of stick, cigarette butts, pieces of cable tie, and so forth. So all of those contaminants we don't want in the blast pot. So use the screen and also when you're finished with filling the pot, put the lid back on the pot to ensure that the whole thing is sealed up. The important thing to remember too, the biggest enemy with this, as I mentioned before, is moisture. So if there is any precipitation imminent, you'll put the lid and screen back on and use the plastic liner from the bulk of bag for the grit to cover this whole thing to keep it free from the elements. So if we keep this clean, dry, it'll always work appropriately. So as I mentioned, this is, a pressure, this is only pressurised when you depress that dead man. So on the bottom of this pot is a, a valve, a blue knob. So that particular knob governs the amount of abrasive that comes through here. So as I mentioned, this is a micro combo valve. So the valve on the bottom here enables the grit, how much grit, comes through to this end of the blast hose. So how do I know how much grit I need? Well basically with these particular valves, and I'm going to pull one apart later on to show you how to repair them, with these particular valves what happens is you can turn this valve in or out whilst the guy is blasting to appropriate the amount of grit we have coming through to us. <laughs> 